What is going on guys, my name is John and welcome back to yet another video. Among the thousands of features that all of the Pokemon games have, I think that ribbons are probably some of the most underappreciated aspects of the entire series. Ribbons are essentially trophies or achievements for completing a specific task. When you receive one, in most cases they're permanently attached to your Pokemon no matter what game you bring it to. They were introduced in Generation 3, so there are over 15 years worth of ribbons out there to collect. But what does it take to collect them all? Today we're going to find out how many ribbons a single Pokemon can have. Before we get started, I just want to mention a couple things. There are a ton of ribbons that are in the game's code that have never been used. There are also special ribbons given out in one-time events, which are obviously no longer available. All the ribbons I collect in this video are currently obtainable without modifying my game, and even if I did this with an event Pokemon, I would still end up with less ribbons in the end. I'll get back to that later though. Just like the Professor Oak video I did last month, there is a subreddit for this kind of challenge, r slash Pokemon Ribbons. Although I made a guide for myself before I actually found this subreddit, there are quite a lot of great guides on there. If you could subscribe to that subreddit, I'd really appreciate it. Considering that we doubled the Professor Oak subreddit in a week, I have faith that we'll give them the recognition they deserve. So starting out with this challenge, the first two ribbons that we have to obtain are oddly enough probably the hardest ones that we have to take care of, mostly because they're mandatory and really out of the way. So out of the Generation 3 games, which one do you think is the first one I'll start with? If you said Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, you'd be correct. If you've never heard of this game, it came out during a time period when there were kinda two main Pokemon games that came out in the same year. This game was only on the GameCube, which is going to be our first stop in our long journey. Just like every other game, there are Pokemon that you can and can obtain. In XD and Colosseum, there are 132 Shadow Pokemon that you can purify, which is the first ribbon that you can collect. Out of this list though, there are plenty of them that won't let us reach our maximum total. In order to get the most that we can, the Pokemon has to be a non-major legendary and has to be under level 50. This does take quite a lot of the list, but there are still plenty to choose from. While there are some really strong Pokemon like Altaria, I chose a Pokemon I know that doesn't get enough love. Fortress. I mean look at him. When was the last time you heard somebody talk about Fortress? Considering that this challenge is all about getting as much recognition as possible, I figured that today would be Fortress's time to shine. Although you can catch one in Colosseum, you can get a Pineco in XD which makes the challenge a little easier to manage. After purifying it at the Relic Stone, we have our first ribbon on the list, the National Ribbon. Thankfully, we only need one more ribbon from this game, but it's definitely a tough one. A very typical feature of console Pokemon games is a Battle Tower-esque mode, and this game doesn't hold out. Mount Battle is a 100 battle challenge that is pretty consistent with the other versions in the series. The opponent levels range from really early game to as high as level 70. In order to obtain the next ribbon, we have to complete Mount Battle without changing our team. Because we can import Pokemon from other GBA games, I brought a few legendaries to take care of the job for me. Almost every Pokemon went down to one hit, which made this a lot easier than I originally thought. As you progress up the mountain, the trainers also get more Pokemon, but each battle took between 1 to 5 minutes. Once you defeat the 100th trainer, everyone in the party is given the Earth Ribbon. I know some people are going to mention that you can skip all the way up to Trainer 90 if you've beat it before, but this ribbon requires that you complete the entirety of Mount Battle or it won't unlock. But with this we're finally ready to hit the handheld games. Our first stop is going to be Pokemon Emerald. While I believe that Ruby and Sapphire have the same obtainable ribbons, there is one feature of Emerald that makes this a little bit easier, but I'll get back to that later. The first and probably the easiest ribbon that's available in this game is the Champion Ribbon. This is for defeating the Elite Four, which actually has more than one purpose. In order to get the ribbon after this one, we need to have our Pokemon reach no higher than level 50. If we go over level 50, we're unable to obtain all of them, so I just switched trained in the Elite Four until we got to the proper level. This also made it so Pineco evolved into Fortress. The next ones that we have to collect are ones that you probably already know about, Pokemon Contests. If you're anything like me, you have zero interest in doing this kind of stuff because of how many more interesting things these games have to offer. If you didn't know, every move in the game comes with what I like to call a contest typing. There are five typings, cool, beauty, cute, smart, and tough. In the Pokemon Contest Hall, they have competitions to see who is the best out of each category. And let me tell you that winning each one of these is not an easy task. Each category has four more categories they have to beat in chronological order. Normal, Super, Hyper, and Master. In Ruby and Sapphire, these contests are spread all throughout the region, but in Emerald, you can take on every single one in Lily Cove City, which is why I chose this game. Out of all the Pokemon I could have chose to do contests, I think that Fortress might have been the worst out of every option that was available. It's a rock with eyes, so I can tell you we're already going to have trouble in the competitions where we have to be cool, beautiful, cute, smart, tough. Yeah, I'm not too sure he's really good at anything here. But we've already made it this far, so I guess there's no looking back. 
In this generation, Fortress's contest moveset is pretty mediocre, but believe it or not, most of the pre-master rank contests are actually not that hard to take care of. Except one. The beauty contests are without a doubt one of the most annoying challenges I've had to take on in a Pokemon game, which I think says a lot. This Pokemon has access to roughly 30 moves, including the ones that we can't get to because they're over level 50, which is an immediate problem because the entire contest is based around moves. There are only two moves that Fortress can know that are under the beauty category, Light Screen and Explosion. Light Screen only grants you a few points, and Explosion doesn't let you use another move in future rounds if you use it. Because these were obviously going to be the hardest ones to deal with, I just dumped a bunch of Pokemon Steroids, also known as Beauty Pokeblocks, into it to give it an increased chance of winning. The first three contests were a lot easier because of that, but the mass round is something out of a sick nightmare. Because the first place contestant wins by reaching the maximum points first, it's literally determined by the second or even first round who the winner is. You basically have to hope that your opponents just ruin each other's scores so you can win. But thankfully after two hours we can finally add the master ribbon to- Face it Fortress, you're just an ugly rock. This single contest ranking took me 23 tries to win. 23! And I barely lost twice. I only got really lucky by using Explosion on the turn where the crowd was at maximum excitement. This made it so my move gained about double the appeal, which I think is literally the only way to win with this Pokemon. To be honest, every other contest was pretty much a breeze in comparison, considering that most of its available moveset is tough, smart, or cool. Cute was also pretty easy, but that didn't change the fact that this took an ungodly amount of time to complete. But with all 5 contest types we completed, we can add another 20 ribbons to our Pokemon. Believe it or not, there are many, many more that we can obtain, even in this game. Before I took on these contests, I spoke with the curator at the Lily Cove Museum, and he said how he wanted to fill the upstairs with paintings. If we beat our opponents in a landslide victory in a master contest, an artist will greet us and tell us that he wants to paint a picture of our Pokemon for our victory. This is another thing that's pretty much all chance because you have to basically ruin everyone's turn and hit the audience bonus for this to happen. I knew that tough was my best chance, so after winning about 4 master contests, I finally did it. This gives us the artist ribbon, bringing the total to 24 ribbons. The last few ribbons reside at a place I've been dreading to take on. The Battle Frontier. So just like taking on Mount Battle, we had to defeat hordes of trainers in order to get our next ribbon. The Battle Tower offers two different modes that we have to complete. Level 50 and Open Level. This is the reason why I couldn't level up my fortress earlier, but once we clear this first section, we're set to grind up as high as we'd like. As many of you know, Fortress is an insanely defensive Pokemon and doesn't really offer a ton of offensive threats because it doesn't have access to a single stab move for either one of its typings. Seriously though, Game Freak, what were you thinking? We're not playing the first generation here. Like, how stupid can you be? But in the same style as Mount Battle, we can kind of cheese our way into getting what we want. The game requires that you stick with your team through all 50 trainers, but since the battles are split into sets of 7, we can just sneak her in once we get to the 7th set. This method works really well for Pokemon that are not good in the metagame, but Fortresses does pretty well because it's actually one of the best Pokemon in this generation competitively for being a setup machine and a defensive powerhouse. Although it's an OU Pokemon in this generation, it definitely needs the help of others to get all the battles done. Overall, with my team of Salamence, Metagross, and our Ribbon Rock, we have a pretty easy time taking on most of the challenges. There were definitely some battles that had me worried, but my team's type coverage was pretty solid. The most annoying part of this entire challenge wasn't even the battles, it was trading it to different games to give Fortress the best moveset I could. Since I pretty much used all my TMs and heart skills for the Pokemon contest, I had to trade her to my Fire Red and Leaf Green versions to teach it more viable moves. In the open level section of the tower, it was actually relatively easy to do because the minimum level requirement is level 60 in Emerald rather than level 100 in Ruby and Sapphire. Because the tower matches your opponents to the highest level Pokemon on your team, I just leveled up my level 50 team 10 levels and breezed through it. The only major difference is that some Pokemon have access to new moves because of the level difference, but at the same time I was also able to do that myself. I won't lie and say that I didn't have some troubles with this though. I lost a level 50 challenge on Trainer 44, which was a huge waste of time, but after clearing through both of these challenges I was able to give Fortress the winning ribbon and the victory ribbon. The last ribbon that we have to collect in this region is one that's actually available in pretty much every game that you can obtain. If you max out all 510 EVs that your Pokemon can have and bring it to this woman in Slayport City, she'll give you the Effort Ribbon. Because I had spent a good amount of time leveling up Fortress for the Battle Tower, it didn't take too many more levels to max out everything I needed to get this. This brings us to a total of 27 ribbons, which is the most that you can get out of this region. But now we have to take on the most difficult generation out of them all, Generation 4. So just like Generation 3, we're going to play the revised version Platinum rather than play Diamond and Pearl because there are exclusive ribbons that you can only obtain in this game. 
This region contains a wide variety of ribbons that range from insanely easy to pretty difficult, so let's start off with the simple ones. The most obvious one that we could start with is by defeating Sinnoh's Elite Four. Although Fortress can pretty much stand on its own at this point, I still used some legendaries and gave it the EXP share to make it go faster. This gives us the Sinnoh Champ Ribbon. After that, I flew to Sunny Shore City to talk to this girl named Julia. If you speak to her, she'll go on and on about her life problems and wants you to reply in the best way that you can. Once you respond to her, she'll react and give your leading Pokemon a ribbon depending on what day it is. If we change the DS's clock forward to each day, we can easily obtain all seven of them. This gives us the Alert, Shock, Downcast, Careless, Relax, Snooze, and Smile ribbons, bringing the total to 35 ribbons. Just east of Pistoria City is a small shack with a man named Dr. Footstep. If your Pokemon has the maximum friendship it can have, he will reward you the Footprint Ribbon. Just like the Effort Ribbon, you can pretty easily obtain it by just leveling up your Pokemon, so I was able to grab it even though Fortress doesn't have anything that resembles feet. The last easy ribbons are located in probably the least visited area of Sinnoh, the Resort Area. Here we can meet up with the Ribbon Syndicate who will only talk to us if our Pokemon has at least 10 ribbons. Since we're well past that number, we can collect 3 ribbons from them. For a price. Each one drastically increases in value, which thankfully we can easily buy because of how easy it is to farm money in these games. The Gorgeous Ribbon is $10,000, the Royal Ribbon is $100,000, and the Gorgeous Royal Ribbon is the most money you can hold in $999,999. Not sure who came up with these creative titles and prices, but hey, what do I know, I just spent $1 million on 3 pieces of metal. So what's next? Oh god, not again. Yep, contests. Unlike last time, these contests require a lot more effort instead of just choosing a move and hoping you win. There are three different categories for each competition. Visual, Dance, and Acting. The visual portion is a section where you give your Pokemon little decoration items based on the theme that they request to see. This is something that you can wing in the earlier ranks, but I used a guide online to find out what the best items are for each category to make it a lot easier. Yeah, isn't he gorgeous? Look at that afro. The dance competition is a rhythm-based event where you have to follow your opponent's moves, but when it's your turn, you have to be in sync with the music playing. Finally, the acting competition is very similar to the one in Emerald. You earn points for the moves that you make, but you also earn additional points for the judge you choose to perform for. If you're the only person that chose that judge, you get the most points, but if someone else chose the same judge as you, you get less points. Overall, these contests are a lot more entertaining and easier in my opinion, but I still had a bit of trouble winning. It took me about 6 tries to win the Beauty Master rank, but comparatively to Emerald, this was a cakewalk. There isn't really much else to mention here, but winning all the Master ranks for this game took about 5 hours to do. Once we've completed the Master rank in every category, we can add another 20 ribbons to the total. Now we have to take on the hard stuff. Oh wow, what a surprise, we're at the Battle Tower again. Yep, and it's basically the same process. Except worse. So there are 5, technically 6 ribbons that you can obtain at the Battle Tower, so let's go over them. The Ability Ribbon is by far the easiest one. You have to win 21 straight battles in the Battle Tower, i.e. take on the Tower Tycoon. Once again, I took another 2 overpowered Pokemon to help Fortress through, and for the most part, it was pretty easy. The Great Ability Ribbon is an extremely creative one, as you have to beat him again. Yeah. Sounds like you're running out of ideas there, Game Freak. This is basically identical to the previous Battle Tower challenges, so I'm no stranger to this kind of challenge by now. The Double Ability Ribbon is completing 50 double battles in a row. This format is probably what I'm best at, so thankfully I was able to finish this one on the first try. The Multi Ability Ribbon is also for double battles, but you have to team up with one of those follower NPCs that you can help through the story. I believe there are 4 or 5 of them that you can choose from as long as you completed their side missions. I just chose Bach because Regice can help with a lot of type coverage on my team. But none of these compare to the annoyingness that the Pair Ability Ribbon has to offer. This one requires that you complete 50 double battles in a row with another person over DS Wireless. Why would anyone want to do that? I can understand teaming up for a couple battles for fun, but 50? That's like minimum 3 if not more hours of constant play. Thankfully I have a second DS to pull this off, but I can't imagine anyone willingly did this for fun aside from the people trying to collect every ribbon that they can. This brings me to talking about the last ribbon here, the World Ability Ribbon. As the name implies, it's basically the same as the last one, except you need to do it over Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Since the service was discontinued 5 years ago, there technically isn't a way to obtain this anymore. The only exception to this ribbon is that there are cloned Nintendo servers that you can connect to if you mess around with your Wi-Fi and DNS settings, but the chance of you actually finding someone random willing to do this is little to none. 
I'm sure there's a decent possibility for a single battle, but I don't think anyone cares enough to do the battle tower on a game as old as this one. I checked on the Ribbon subreddit and it's basically unanimous that this one doesn't count if you try to get them, but like I said, you can technically still get it. I ended up passing on this one, so if you think I didn't get them all, that's fine, but I've spent a ton of time in this area, so I'm just going to move on. And moving on we are, to a whole new game. Heart Gold and Soul Silver are probably the most underwhelming games that we have to collect ribbons for, mostly because there's literally only one in the entire region to collect. Yeah. The only ribbon you can collect is the Legend Ribbon, which is for defeating Red on top of Mount Silver. Not much to say here, you've probably all done this yourselves, so that's all there is to collect in these games. But there is still something we can do before we go to the next generation. Because your lead Pokemon follows you in these games, if you talk to them, sometimes they'll interact back and give you a special item. Originally, these seem to be completely random, but there's actually a pattern based on what nature your Pokemon is. If you just keep talking to your Pokemon on the correct route, eventually they'll give you a gold leaf. If you collect all five of them on one Pokemon and take it to Lyra, she'll turn it into the shiny crown. This isn't a ribbon, nor does it appear in battle or any other games, but the community considers this as an additional one just because it's also available in the Pokemon summary. Plus, it also looks really cool. Other than that, we finished Gen 4 with a whopping 66 ribbons including the shiny crown. Pretty crazy, but we still have more to get. On to Generation 5. So Black and White are without a doubt the easiest generation to obtain ribbons. Why? Because there aren't any. Pokemon X and Y. So upon receiving Fortress after using the Poke Transporter, we immediately get new ribbons. Kinda. Because Game Freak knew that our list of 66 ribbons would be hard to put on one screen, they implemented ribbons to count for specific sets of ribbons. The first one is the Contest Memory Ribbon. This is for any ribbon you won in a contest before transferring over. If you manage to win all 40 contests, you're given a Gold Contest Memory Ribbon on top of that. The Battle Memory Ribbon is obviously the same deal, but for battles. If you collected all 8 of the Battle Ribbons, you're also given a Gold Battle Memory Ribbon to commemorate that. Because I didn't get the one that required Wi-Fi, I'm only given a blue one. The next expected one with our new game is for defeating the Elite Four for the 6,000th time. Upon defeating the final member, we earn the Kalos Champion Ribbon. The next one requires that I use something that I've literally used once since it came out. Pokemon and me. Yes, I know, it's cute and all that, but I like catching Pokemon and torturing myself with challenges. I don't have time to pet rocks. But if we play with Fortress enough and bring it to Bonnie, she'll give us the best friend's ribbon. Also on the bottom half of the 3DS is Super Training. In each of the 30 challenges, there's a medal that you have to get. Once you've achieved all of them, if you go to Lumio City, a woman will give you the training ribbon for your efforts. Next up is the Battle Maison. Welcome once again to the very original concept of battling people for ribbons. Unlike the others, however, you have to meet the streak requirement. It doesn't matter what mode you play. Since I'm definitely better at double battles, I stuck with that. The Skillful Battler ribbon is for beating the Chantelaine on the 20th battle, which wasn't that hard of a task, but oh boy was the next one not fun. The Expert Battler ribbon requires that you battle her again on the 50th super battle. I think I failed this section more than any other battle contest, which is saying a lot. The first time that you encounter her, she's a pretty standard competitive team. Well balanced, good moves, the whole works. But apparently she was so upset that she lost that she went on a journey across every region to make sure that you don't stand a chance. No matter what battle style you choose, her entire team consists of legendaries. Thankfully I still have a ton of OU Pokemon from these games that I could use to take it on, but this was a nerve wracking battle to say the least. Once you claw your way out of this section, you're done with everything X and Y has to offer. Up next is Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. That's right, unfortunately we have to revisit Hoenn. Thankfully there's a lot less that we have to do this time. Per usual, we have to defeat the Elite Four. I know you're probably thinking, but does that even count? You already have the ribbon for defeating the Hoenn Elite Four. Game Freak planned ahead on this one, and they are actually different. You see, in Emerald, we obtained the Champion Ribbon. This is the Hoenn Champion Ribbon. Much, much different. The last ones we need to obtain are all in the same place that I've been trying to run away from this entire time. I'm going to save you the boredom and just cut to the chase. These are way easier before and I'm very thankful for that. Because you can't max out on Pokeblocks anymore, you can just feed your Pokemon until they're maxed in every contest type and you're pretty much done. For some reason they renamed the smart category to clever, but with the cool, beauty, cute, Clever and tough ribbons earned, we can add them to the total for an even 80 ribbons. But they added a prize for finishing all of them. Another ribbon! The Contest Star ribbon is actually kind of interesting because it appears when you go into battle. 
I kind of see it in the same sense as the shiny crown from earlier, but this is a neat feature that I didn't really know about until I got far in the challenge. But with this completed in Generation 6, we can move on to the final stretch, Ultra Sun and Moon. This generation is a big relief over the others that we've done before. We start out with the obvious Alola Champion Ribbon for defeating the Elite Four again, but we do have another for something we haven't done before in this challenge. Play a Battle Royale. Step aside Fortnite, Apex Legends, we're about to play the best Battle Royale out there, and it's called... Uh... Battle Royale. Hmm. This mode is a free-for-all battle where you have to be the last one standing. Or, I guess, floating. Fortress is a pretty good advantage here with access to stuff like Protect and Earthquake, so for the most part this is a really easy thing to win. Just like the contest, there are four ranks that you have to beat, and when you win the Master Rank, you're awarded the Battle Royale Master Ribbon. Our final stop is the one that will truly test your skills. We have to take on the Battle Tree. Just like the other games, this is another consecutive win style game. In this, I actually chose playing singles rather than doubles, as you have to fight Red, who has five different Pokemon to choose from in a three Pokemon battle. Compared to Gary's nine options and a four slot Pokemon double battle, it's easier to predict what he's going to send out. In the same fashion as the Battle Maze on, you earn your first ribbon for defeating him on the 20th win streak, and then again on the 50th streak for Super Battles. It was definitely a tough battle regardless of the streak, but with the Battle Tree Great Ribbon and the Battle Tree Master Ribbon, we've successfully obtained all the ribbons that a single Pokemon can have at this point in time. So for being super technical, the maximum amount of ribbons you can have on a single Pokemon is 87 which includes the Wi-Fi Battle Ribbon and the Gold Battle Memory Ribbon that we couldn't collect. Because I know that some people might mention it, for some reason in Generation 7, the Memory Ribbon colors were swapped, so apparently no matter how many ribbons you collected, there will always be blue for contests and gold for battles. If we remove the Shining Crown and just count the ribbons, we get a total of 86, which is an insane amount of ribbons that you can collect. I honestly assumed that there were at most 35, 40 when I started researching, but when I realized it was over double what I thought, I knew I was in for a challenge. An overwhelming amount of these ribbons were based on luck, which made this pretty annoying to complete, but overall it was still a pretty fun challenge to do. Because I played a ton of different games, I'm not exactly sure how long it took me to finish this, but if I were to take a guess, it was probably well over 100 hours from start to finish. I lost so many times to the Battle Tower and Master Rank contests, but a lot of the later gen challenges were pretty easy. I might continue this trend in the future if Sword and Shield have them, but for now I think I'm done winning ribbons. And that's going to do for today's video. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe as we'll be making more content soon. If you have any challenge ideas that you'd like to see, leave a comment below. If you're interested in doing the challenge, subscribe to the subreddit down in the description. Feel free to join my Discord server in the description to hang out with other members of the community. I'm also starting to use my Twitter account after like a year, so follow me at JohnstoneYT for possible pre-upload snippets of future videos. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.